Hi, I'm Tom with Erie Tech. We created this video to help you understand some questions you might come across when dealing with AC induction motors. Today we're going to use this WAG motor and nameplate to help us through. One of the first questions I would ask a customer who's looking for a new motor is whether or not this is existing or if it's new. If it's new, there's a lot of questions we need to ask to make sure we get the proper motor. If it's existing, we want to find out how long that motor lasted. If it failed prematurely, we don't want to replace it with the same problem. The load or application is going to tell us a little bit more about what we need to select. As far as service factor, uh, it's also going to help us determine whether or not this motor has any special features that might be needed. There are a lot of different options out there, which we'll post here for you to take a look at. If the motor requires a V-belt drive, the larger motors, you might want to change the bearings out. Most motors will come with ball bearings, but on larger horsepower motors, you want to put a cylindrical roller bearing in there. And a manufacturer can do that, and it will help with the overhung load you would see in a V-belt drive. Some motors might need an encoder if they're being used with a VFD. Now, vector duty motors will come with an encoder, but inverter duties will come ready to be used with an encoder. One of the first things you'll notice is probably the manufacturer, followed by the model number and the wiring diagram. Other important information would be the voltage, the current, the phases, and the frequency, or hertz. Those are all going to be on any nameplate you're going to have from an AC induction motor perspective. Many motors will have multiple voltages or currents, and we need to know what you'll be using as far as the voltage that determines what current and that will matter quite a bit when it comes to motor controls and overload protection. Our example today is a 230 slash 460 volt motor. Now if you're using this motor at 230 volts you're going to have a 2.94 amp draw but if you're using it at 460 volts you're going to have a 1.47 amp draw. So those dual ratings do matter. This motor is also dual rated for 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Now the attributes, if you use it with 60 hertz, are up top in the larger area, but if you were to use it in a 50 hertz area, it's down below here and you could find that. This also happens to be a three phase motor where some of the smaller motors can also be single phase all the way up to 15 horsepower. The reason why that matters is at 230 volts, you could be single phase or three phase depending on your power source. So it's important that we get the right motor to match what your phases are at that power source. Another important factor is the horsepower. This example happens to be one horsepower, which is equal to 0.75 kilowatts as well. Speed with motors can be somewhat complex. Some nameplates like this one will denote 1765 RPMs or somewhere in that range, where others will show that what's called a synchronous speed of 1800 RPMs. When the motor is at full load or has a load on the shaft, it's going to slow down. We call that slip. And what that does actually creates more torque in the rotating magnetic field that drives the motor. The reason why that can be an important thing is that if you're using this with a belt drive, a chain drive, or even a gearbox, your output speed of that drive system is going to be impacted because we want to use for calculation purposes the slip speed, not the synchronous speed. Another factor to consider is the frame and the mounting style. Now this example here has a foot mount and there is no C face, but it also is a 143 slash 145 T frame. What that means is that it was dual drilled in its base so that you could use it for either one of those applications depending on what your original bolt pattern was. When it comes to NEMA motor frame designations, there are digits and there are letters. If you have a two digit number, you divide that by 16 to get your shaft height. For instance, 48 divided by 16 would be three inches. So your 48 frame motor has a three inch shaft height. In a three digit, motor frame though, like this example we have here of 143 slash 145, we take the first two digits, the one and the four, divide that by four, and we get a three and a half inch shaft height. One of the other questions I might have with somebody looking for uh, a motor is the environment or enclosure. Our example is TEFC or totally enclosed fan cooled. There are other options as well, including TENV, which is totally enclosed non-ventilated, or ODP, which is open drip proof. If this is gonna be in a high temperature environment, a low temperature environment, such as a freezer, around corrosive gases, 
or high humidity, those are considerations we would wanna make sure that we're taken care of. Another consideration is the construction. Our example here is rolled steel. It won't dissipate heat as well as a cast iron, but it weighs a lot less. And in some cases, depending on if you have high humidity or corrosive gases, you would also need to have a stainless steel motor, which normally will have a round body like this as well. Now, if you're gonna be around food grade, that's another discussion altogether because you may need stainless steel or you might need it something that's painted with an epoxy. Something else I, I wouldn't wanna discount here on the nameplate is that actually will identify for you what your bearings are, what grease is recommended for the motor. This is very important for long-term maintenance. And you can see that it will say uh, DE, which is your drive end, which is where your output shaft is be, or your ODE, which is the opposite drive end, which is at, in this case, where the fan shroud is. You may also realize that there's a NEMA design letter on here. Our example is a NEMA design B, which is the most common. That means it's rated to have normal starting torque, but low starting current. There's also A, C, and D options, depending on your application. The nameplate's also gonna show you the insulation class, indicated by a letter. Insulation life is cut in half for every 10 degrees Celsius rise above the insulation rating. So the farther into the alphabet, the better the performance. Our example here happens to be the most common, which is insulation class F, good for 155 degrees Celsius or 311 degrees Fahrenheit. In comparison, the Class F insulation has a longer nominal life at a given operating temperature than a Class B, which is only rated for 130 degrees Celsius or 266 degrees Fahrenheit. And one last thing, we see the motor is rated as an inverter duty, which means that it's capable of being operated with a variable frequency drive. Please note that there are two separate inverter duty ratings, CT or constant torque, of two to one means that the motor can be run at half of the base motor speed for constant torque applications, such as a conveyor, and not overheat. In this case, that would be 882 RPMs. Or VT, or variable torque, of 1,000 to one means that the motor can be run at one 1,000th one of a base motor speed for variable torque applications, such as centrifugal pumps, fans, and not overheat, which means we could run the motor as slow as 1.76 RPMs, with the added benefit of potentially significant energy savings as well. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you learned something. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Erie Tech.